Hey y'all, in for h and h here. Exciting day. So as I shoot this video today, the power company finally came out and took care of the power poles that were causing so much noise for me. And uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I started reporting this noise two years ago, as a matter of fact, in the fall of 2021. And uh, it's now September, 2023. Uh, thankfully, Jeff, W4DD, who, who wrote some software that can sniff out the areas of uh, problem, you know, it, it basically you drive around the neighborhood with his software, it's listening through an HF rig, and you can see all about that if you watch the, the video that I've got. I'll put the link down in the description. It's from a few weeks ago. So Jeff came out with his equipment and we rode around the neighborhood and even the two next door neighborhoods and identified any areas where the noise was more prominent. It ended up being four poles in my neighborhood. And then Jeff had the equipment to narrow down to exactly which piece of hardware on the pole was causing the arcing, because that's what you're hearing when you got power line noise. And uh, it was various different things. Um, you know, a lightning arrestor was blown. It was very old. Uh, that was actually a surprise. They they found that today. Because once they got rid of the worst noise, then they still heard a noise and it was a lightning arrestor. But the other things were, uh, one was dirty insulators and they just went ahead and replaced all of the insulators on that pole uh, with the newer type. The older uh, insulators are prone to uh, a buildup of dirt and dust and, and uh, they'll arc. And then there was um, some loose uh, staples loose staples that hold the ground wires. Those can cause arcing. Um, there was a, uh, a terrible connection on the top of a transformer, the wire coming down from a, um, a lightning arrestor connecting to the top of the transformer. There's a rubber boot that goes over it to call a squirrel guard, but we definitely pinpointed it with, with uh, Jeff's equipment. We were able to know exactly that the noise was coming from under that boot. Anyway, long story short, um, I'm used to seeing S8, S9 noise level here on 12 meters uh, with amp one turned on and look at it now. And I'll try different antennas. Off center fed dipole, ZS6 BKW, which is both of those antennas are, are resonant on this band. My vertical, which is also resonant on this band and my doublet. Now the, the doublet is not resonant here but uh, I can tell you when the noise was there, even then I could, I could hear it even on the doublet. Now I can use the antenna tuner and, that'll, and use the doublet on this band. But look, that's just amazing. There was a little bit of hash this afternoon uh, after they finished, but I can tell you, you know, it, it gets down to the point where you're probably hearing your neighbor's wall warts because I've, I've made sure I don't have any noisy wall warts in my house. You know, the little square power supplies that plug into the wall to power various modern electronic devices. Um, you know, and I had a friend of mine, his food sealer in his kitchen was causing noise. And, it, you know, it wasn't even on. It was just plugged in. But the power supply, you know, a lot of new devices, as long as they're plugged in, the power supply is operating. And it's just waiting on a soft on, just like this radio, the, the, the FTDX 101MP here. The power supply is in the speaker and I've got it turned on. So all it's waiting for is for me to long press that button. So there's power in the rig, as long as the power supply is powered up. Um, and so um, it's just looking for a signal off that button. That button is not literally transferring the power to turn the radio on. It's just telling the radio to turn on. Okay, through, you know, essentially an IC chip. So a lot of things that we buy today, as long as they're plugged in, they're powered. Now on this radio, um, you know, oh, wrong one this way. That speaker you see right here is also the power supply because this is the 200 watt version of the FTDX 101. And there's a switch on the back. Now I can turn that switch off, and indeed, there is no power to the radio. But a lot of the modern electronics we bring into our home, when they're plugged in, they're, they're powered, their power supply is doing its thing, and those power supplies can be noisy. Uh, cheap LED bulbs. Um, computer power supplies. Now, I'm not talking about so much the desktops, but the laptop, the little bricks you carry around for your laptop, also laptop, those can be also very problematic. So, uh, but the power line noise is gone. If I have any more noise now, I'll, I'll have to, you know, it'll be something 
in my house or my neighbor's house. And I'm always very careful about what I bring into my home when I'm shopping for electronics. I mean, we had uh, the LED lights for my daughter's aquarium causing massive problems on 20 meters. Okay, so I just wanted you guys to know that after two years of, now when I say two years, it started ramping up and just gradually got worse. So if you've been on my channel enough, you know uh, I've shot a lot of videos about power line noise. Um, it's almost never the transformer. In fact, just it's not. It's hardware on the pole. And it usually gets, starts off in the heat of the afternoon on a day that has a very low humidity because what's happening is the voltage has to build up to a higher level before it arcs over. When you have low humidity and moisture in the air, you know, it'll arc over quicker and usually at a lower voltage and it doesn't cause as much noise uh, to our radios. But mine gradually got worse. I started reporting it about two years ago. It started, it just gradually got so bad that it was so, uh, well, it would arc out anytime, rain or shine, day or night, high humidity, low humidity, didn't care. So this is a glorious thing for me to have uh, this fixed. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So uh, again, this, this video, I'll just give you the date. It was shot on September the uh, 25th of 2023. So it's been about two years to get this fixed. Let me show you a couple other bands. You know, um, 10 meters was a problem. Um, I mean, look at this, just quiet. Now I'm running IPO here. And I do know if I don't need an amp one, I'm not going to run it. See, I'm not running amp one because this guy's really nice and strong. Now I'll get some atmospheric noise if I go to amp one. And you know the drill. If somebody wants a if somebody wants a signal report, you're going to get a more accurate reading. Is you know okay? If you've been watching my channel enough, you know these S meters are notorious for not being totally accurate. Uh, but they'll get you a relative nice, relatively close reading. But see, there's the noise floor about S4. That's mostly atmospherics. And like I say, probably a few wall warts in my neighbor's houses. And I'm not going to go knocking on doors and deal with that because I'm, I'm, this is plenty good. And again, I'm going to normally run intercept point optimization even on 20 meters. Whoops. Come on, Doug. Get it. There we go. And I'll even run it up here on... Uh, I'll run it on the... Now, of course, right now I'm on... Let me change the band stack here. There we go. Sideband, 17 meters. Looks like it's open. So, if the signals are strong enough, I'll even go to IPO here. All right, well, that's what I wanted you to see. I'm very excited. You know, it's awful. If you're a ham operator and you spend your time learning, passing these licenses, tests, getting nice radios, only to be made deaf, <laughs> rendered deaf, by your power lines. And so I'm really excited to have that solved. Hey, thanks uh, you guys for watching videos on my channel, uh, channel here. And especially thank you to the Patreon team members who, well, with, quite frankly, without them, you wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, it's no secret YouTube, uh, especially for something like ham radio. It's not a huge population that are involved in looking at these kind of videos. So the YouTube advertising is, is not enough to keep this going. But we have a Patreon team, patreon.com forward slash N4H&H. They keep these videos coming to you. So thank you so much to the Patreon team. And hey, you know, consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel. I uh, usually put out a couple of videos a week. Usually one public and then one goes just to the Patreons uh, every Friday, usually around noon Eastern time. Again, hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel.